Hello, and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. Previously, I was talking about how the young Lady Louisa Lennox came to live in Ireland, and how, at the age of 15, she married Tom Connolly, heir to one of Ireland's greatest houses and estates, Castletown, in County Kildare. When Tom and Louisa first moved to Castletown, large parts of the house remained unfinished. There was, for example, no main staircase that had to be put in. A lot of these sort of jobs would have been undertaken by specialist craftsmen. But that wasn't the case with Castletown's print room, where Louisa quite literally adopted a hands-on approach. She had to do so because the creation of such a space required a lot of careful preparation. One of the most important tasks was to build up a sufficiently large collection of prints, and we know that Louisa had been buying them before she started for at least the previous six years. In 1762, she wrote to her sister, Lady Sarah Bunbury, I always forget to thank you, my dear, for the prints you sent me. I hope you got them of Mrs. Renier, for I have a bill there. The two little ones that you admired so are the very things I wanted. That of Helen is charming. I have not yet time to do my print room. That was in 1762, and as late as February 1768, by which time she was finally embarking on the project, she was still writing to her sister Sarah, any time you choose to go into a print shop, I should be obliged to you if you would buy me five or six large prints. Looking around the walls of Castletown's print room, it soon becomes apparent that there's no overriding theme to the decoration there. The sacred and profane can be seen side by side, and prints made from old master paintings are hung right beside those from contemporary works, at least what would have been contemporary in Louise's time. One of the pleasures of the room is working out how many of the original sources can be identified today. Immediately above the left-hand side of the white marble chimney piece, for example, is this print. It's taken from Domenichino's St. Agnes, painted almost a century and a half earlier in 1620, and now in the British Royal Collection. So that reflects Louisa's interest in old masters. Notice, incidentally, how the print is a reverse of the original, a very common feature here. Then there are her other interests, such as the theatre. Look at this section of the wall and notice the print at the top centre. It's this, a very popular picture at the time, as it shows the era's most famous actor, David Garrick, alongside the equally popular Susanna Sibber, at a particularly dramatic moment in Thomas Otway's tragedy, Venice Preserved. At the time, everyone would immediately have recognised the two performers, and indeed the play, thereby demonstrating how au courant Louisa was with London theatre. Like many people then, and indeed now, Louisa had a weakness for the sentimental, as is evident by the presence in the room of examples of work by French artist Jean-Baptiste Greuze. Here's his The Reading of the Bible, which had a huge success when exhibited in the Salon in Paris in 1755. And here's a print of it hanging in Castletown. Louisa had very personal reasons for including some of the prints in her room. Her sister, Lady Sarah Bunbury, has already been mentioned. She lived in England, where in 1765, Sir Joshua Reynolds painted her as a classical figure sacrificing to the graces. And in a most prominent place on the end wall of Castletown's print room, we see a copy of that painting. Rather as today, one might have a photograph on display of a favorite family member. One could go all around the room looking at the original sources of the prints used and what they might have meant. But let's finish today with one more, this time hanging between the room's two windows. It shows a young man and two girls, and it's a print of Van Dyck's portrait of the three eldest children of Charles I. The reason for its inclusion is simple. The young man in question grew up to be Charles II and was therefore Louisa's great-grandfather. So, by putting the picture here, she was making a statement about her links to royalty. That's probably enough for today. But in the next episode, I want to talk about how the print room was put together and what materials were used. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Day's Theatre. Goodbye.